So the first thing is the uh, review and approval of the minutes from September 9th. Someone make a motion to approve them? So moved. Second. All in favor? Second. All right. We're good. All right. I wanted to give a quick update on the Laurel Hill representative. Um, the by town bylaws require that, well, they list a Laurel Hill representative as part of the cemetery commission, but we do not have one right now. Uh, Leonel Delavania was the representative. He has resigned from Laurel Hill. And I've been in contact with um, the president of Laurel Hill and she said that they're rebuilding their board and no one right now is interested in coming. So they won't be sending anyone for a while, but I'll be meeting with her in a couple of weeks, I hope, and see if we can, what we can work out. But we'll see what happens with that. Right. <clears throat> and next I thought we'd do an update on the headstone condition assessment project. Where are we? So we've uh, sent everything um, back and forth, just getting the contract done. Uh, there was one last piece that we're actually finishing uh, as we speak. Uh, this morning, so I sent back one one concern I had about the contract to them um, and asked them to just uh, so they were asking for a mobile 20% on mobilization, mm -hmm. but Mass General doesn't allow us to pay deposits, so I just asked them to uh, change it to after the initial site visits the first payment. Mm -hmm. So if they're fine with that, we can actually have the contract signed today. Oh, wonderful. And uh, with still an anticipated of them having it done uh, on the date that we have it. Which is March. March 1st, which would be plenty of time for us to put together then taking that to the annual town meeting right. um, for the next step. Okay. So, um, like I said, I'm, I don't foresee this as an issue. I think it's very minor. We've had some other things that have gone back and forth just to clean it up mm -hmm. and, and that, um, and mm -hmm. we're ready to go, so. Yeah. Great. Have they indicated when they might start or they were not? They, they haven't, uh, but they did ask who would be their point contact once. And I told them once the contract's done, Chris will be the point contact. And if at any time Chris is not available, that Karen, you would be the next one. Okay. So that's, okay. I see it as this, this would be my handoff from the legal parts to, okay, assessment now in Chris's hands. So hopefully after today, Chris will contact them directly if we get everything signed and coordinate the rest of it moving forward. Good, 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 great, all right. Um, update on the work to reach out to families to let them know about the removal of overgrown plant material. I know you've made some progress. A little bit of progress. I haven't reached out to anybody, um, but compiled a few, a few um, good addresses. Um, and, you know, as suspected, a majority of these are not necessarily easily found. Uh, you're talking generations back on families. Um, the, all, all, of the, all of the graves in question are actually listed on Find a Grave on the website. They, okay. they have been photographed and documented by somebody. Um, so the next step is once we, once we formalize what we are actually sending out, which I believe we've about done, um, I may try to reach out to those people um, who, who have documented those graves on find a grave to see if they have any direct connection with it or, you know, a lot, oftentimes I believe that that's just done out of curiosity and interest, um, not necessarily any specific connection. So um, that's, I think, about the best avenue we can do um, without getting into a big genealogical project. <laughs> um, I, I really, I really feel that most of these these plots in question are, I, w I wouldn't say abandoned, but um, haven't been visited in some some time. Um, so yeah. we're making it, we're making an effort. We've been talking about it at, at these public meetings. Um, mm -hmm. So that's you know that's another avenue to get the word out there. If there's any questions or concerns, I would suggest that people reach out to us. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I feel by the by the spring we'll be ready to do some removals on, on these overgrown shrubberies. Okay. Any questions or thoughts? Um, update of the on the clean out of the tool shed. Any progress so far? <laughs> um, not really any progress there yet. We've been plugging away at it with uh, the light, easy, you know, simple decision disposal okay. stuff. Okay. Uh, I know Chris and I are going to get together and go over some of the bigger stuff. It's just, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, when and scheduling. Um, sure. 
I know we were going to try to have something done before this meeting, but maybe we can try to just go over it again and sure. And, uh, you know, whenever you're whenever you're just dealing and just moving with things, you know, you want to make sure we do it properly. You know, that's the main thing. So don't don't be hastily. Let's be make sure. Right. We, well, that kind of stuff takes time too. Just going through all. Yeah, it does. You know, it does. I mean, it takes time to figure out what is you know usable or you know or, you know just replaceable or just disposable. So we'll make sure we we'll, we'll make sure we have that a little bit better for next time. <laughs> well, I don't. It's not urgent. I just didn't yeah. want it to fall off the radar. That's oh, all. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, because I know it's important. So we're gonna. The next thing is to continue our discussion of the twice a year removal of temporary pots and other items left on monuments. Um, and I had said and definition of permanent pots because that seemed to come up last time. Um, he was the person who has to work with this most, so. Um, Thought we'd give him a chance to speak about that. It's okay. As far as disposing of the, the, the pots and stuff, yeah, I think that um, um, our feeling on that is, you know, when the time comes, you know, hopefully people have done it themselves, so we don't have to, you know, we don't have to take take the lead on figuring out what what is good and what is bad. You know what I mean? So we're, we're, we're hoping that people do that, but if not, then we're going to take them out and. Uh, you know, maybe we'll set some aside for a little bit, see if somebody comes and claims them. If not, you know, we don't want to house the clutter either, you know. So the main, we're, we're trying to, uh, a lot of efforts going into the, uh, you know, preservation and up, up, you know, bringing up the cemetery where it should be respectfully. And we don't want to clutter it up with, we don't want to clutter behind us, you know, dirty one closet, clean down another. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that, that's kind of where we're at. We're, we're, it's kind of going to be a learning curve the first round, you know. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to revisit the whole thought on that. But once we do a first round, yeah. you know, we should uh, have a better idea or so. Okay. Anyway. So, so how does one describe temporary versus permanent? Is there is there a definition of that? Well, we, that's one of the things we, we can talk about today. Um, I did a tour on Sunday uh -huh. and I found nothing permanent other than things that were literally built into the headstones. Mm -hmm. Everything else was not permanent, was movable. Um, some of it was quite heavy, but it was all movable. And so um, I think our definition of, I don't know that we need to define permanent. I, I think that's kind of a getting more into the weeds than we want to do. I think right. we should leave it up to you guys to Right. To decide. I mean, some things were very obviously plastic, and other things were materials that are still not going to survive winter. Uh, for you know, or so is there? I ha I haven't done that review that you just talked about, but are there some that are ceramic and beautiful, and versus something that is plastic and won't really survive for the winter? I mean, are, are there? How, how do how do we? How do you make that distinction? Well, I, I think that. Um... You know the condition and the amount of time that they're there and the maintenance of them you know we don't want to get into a situation where we're talking about the plantings you know where we got to rip them out if people are putting them there and, and then they're just one and done ignoring them um you know i i think that will you know self-dictate itself that hey these, these need to go or these need to be set aside or maintained and, and uh, um, so I think, I think, again, that's going to be a, a learning curve for us, you know, we're just going to have to figure out, you know, tastefully figure out what's permanent and what is not, you know, it, it all, it's all going to depend on how well they're maintained, I would assume, you know. So I guess we just give you a little bit of discretion. Yeah. But as we go along, if there are some things we want to allow to stay, I think it's much better that we just define what's allowed to stay. And the assumption is if it's not on the allowed list, then it's then it's not allowed. I know that was my main thing at the last meeting. I don't want us trying to guess at everything that could be left there of what is not allowed. I'd rather say this is what we allow to remain there year round. And it could be if they're trying to put up some type of planner or something else that they actually have to come in it could be at first just going to Chris, and then if uh, if if Chris feels as though it's questionable, we'll take it to the whole board. But like if somebody was to put like a cement urn, you know, attach it to one of their headstones or something, and you know, you know, that could be something we say, yeah, that could be a permanent year round as long as it's maintained. 
If not, we'll pull the plannings out. But um, yeah, um, I think that's the easiest way. And then the rest is just Hugh and his crew using a little discretion as far as um, down there at the cemetery. But yeah, All right. But I think that will also help with us doing that because you know we don't want to show up and we would a task and only be able to do a third. And we're not sure what you know. I think so. If we do have some decisions, that'll help clarify that and expedite us mm -hmm. doing that. You know. And I have to say, in my walk through, I think I found one ceramic, mm -hmm. and that was actually very lightweight. And ceramic doesn't isn't necessarily going to survive a couple of winters either. So um, most things were were clearly you know wood, uh, mostly plastic. Um, so I, I think it best if we just our bylaws state that we that it can be done at the discretion of the highway. highway right. So I think since we're starting to do more of this. We'll go give it a try. Um, start for November 1st, okay, and April 15th. Um, the only other question I had was what's the best way to get that out to the public? Do we do need to do a little press release or something? Or However you guys feel like is the best way to get it out. We could prepare a press release stating, you know, here's one of the things in order to, you know, just better maintain this, the integrity of the cemetery. Here are some of the things that we're going to do and get it out that way. Um, we can post the press release on our website and, you know, however else. I mean, I guess the only, the only question, obviously, do we just leave it to Hugh's discretion for this first round and we make it official for April 15th? Because we're only a month away from November 1st. Right. So, and, you know, I don't think the cemetery in and of itself is in bad shape right now it's not. in any way, shape, or form. So um, I think that we could probably just let you at his discretion, get rid of those that are in bad shape for now, but then really get out to people that we're going to do this twice a year cleanup. Because uh, I assume that the next one will be people putting up reefs. Right. And typically, they just get left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then at some point, they just come in and clean it up. And uh, so. Yeah. Yeah, I suspect your spring cleanup will be more right. than the, than now. There's not there's not much now really that right. looks bad. So um, right. well, some of that would our fall cleanup. There will just be part of that. You know what I mean? Cleaning them out, shake them out. So why don't we just leave it at his discretion for now, and then get the information out for um, the spring, and then the spring and fall annual cleanups. Okay. That'd be my recommendation. How does everyone else feel about it? One more, one more question. So the things that are coming off, are, you said you're going to store them somewhere. So can people pick them up if they really wanted them? Oh. I'm concerned that we're, we're, we're taking things away that have some meaning to people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are we going to do with them? And yeah. can they pick them up again? Might they show up again in the spring? I, I think, again, discretion. I mean, if it's like a, a nice path, it's just kind of a you know, let unmaintained. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll pull that, maybe we'll shake it out, set it up by the shed or read, but it's, if it's a plastic thing that, you know, you get with a plant and you just set it there, yeah. you know, we're not going to get into store and end things, obviously, but, but if it seems like it does have some value, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into housing stuff, but, you know, I mean, I think maybe a short term for a first cycle or two, if we can set them aside, um, would make sense, but, you know, I guess that goes back to, you know, what Mr. Canales said about hey, what is good and what is bad. If you, if you remove it from the plot and set it aside somewhere, well, who's to I, say the person that picks it up is the person that owns it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You, you leave it at the grave at that point if there's a question of it. Okay. You know, I think, I think we need to have rules and we need to yeah. stick to them to a point. Um, you walk through any other cemetery. I went through St. Anne's and Lennox last night, as a matter of fact, and it's immaculate. There are Christmas wreaths left from last season there. There's rules and they're enforced. And quite honestly, it doesn't seem to be a, an issue <laughs> after after time. I think our, our issue now is we're afraid to approach this subject because we haven't enforced right. the rules. There may be a period of ripping the Band-Aid off, but I think once we set a new precedent, it'll be accepted as, as the norm. You know, I, I really think that setting stuff aside at a different location, you're just going to invite somebody else to come along and think it's mm -hmm. a tag sale and grab and grab things. So at what point, you know, mm -hmm. did we do any justice in that intent there? I think if 
if, if you want the proper owner to come claim it, it needs to be claimed at the grave site. Yeah, the other thing I saw was um, different kinds of grave goods left and, um, you know, on top of stones, you know, and little, little figures and that sort of thing. And it struck me that as long as they're on the stone, it's not an issue for you guys Absolutely. and okay. they would stay. They would all, I think those would stay. We're really it's talking about good. planting containers yes. and seasonal decorations, Christmas wreaths, Christmas trees. Um, again, I, I picked them up in July of this year. <laughs> it filled my truck with Christmas decorations. Now that's talk about discretion. And we had somebody in in-house prior, I'm sure the Christmas decorations would not have been left till July. Um, that's really the, the, the crux of what we're, what we're getting at here is that kind of stuff. Um, obvious containers that have been left for several years would have grass growing out of, you know, flower pots. That's, that's the obvious stuff. When we talk discretion, I don't think we need to get into the weeds. I think we just need to really use discretion of the obvious, the obviously neglected things. And, you know, and, and of course, there's, there's always going to be somebody's going to come back for their container. Um, so if there's any question, then you just leave it. And I think the other option of having the two cleanup days is more to protect a little bit of you because you don't always know what people take as personal or something that's sentimental or whatever. You know, Hugh's got to make just his best judgment on it. So if we're just saying, hey, on these cleanup dates, we're just going across and cleaning it up, it's more of his discretion of what he's going to leave. But other than that, everything else is, is going. And, you know, um, I don't, you know, that gets to the whole, do we store things? We either store things for a month, everything, or we just say, we're just clearing it. Here's the dates. But we do want to make sure that we get it out plenty ahead of time. People are aware of it. And like Chris said, once you get used to it, right, a lot of cemeteries do do this. Some do it on a daily, weekly, monthly, or whatever basis, you know. You can go to the extreme of Arlington Cemetery where if you leave something there, by the next day it's gone. <laughs> or, you know. Or, um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do think we should get something out now, though, in terms of a press release or some kind of and something on the website, just to let people know that we're starting this. I just would feel more comfortable. Is everyone comfortable with that? Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. I think if you start talking it up like this, I think you're going to see that it, to a point, becomes self-managed. Yes. I think people will then yes. understand and they will take some onus to the, you know, to the, to the situation, um, you know. But I, but I think the first round, if it's something that, geez, I'm not really sure, I, not, you know, I'll set it aside, you know, and I, I agree 100% with Chris, this thing should streamline itself and eventually yeah. go no, go gauge, but yeah. there will be a couple of things, and, you know, just you know, okay. avoid any any further or any, you know, future incidents or something with somebody, you know, if it's yeah. kind of questionable, we'll, we'll set it somewhere, but see how it pans out. All right. Sounds good. So I'll talk with you guys about the press release. Just to, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we really get the word out. I mean, this is part of it, but I don't think this is all of it. So, all right, great. Okay. Um, on the next item agenda, it says continued discussion of current cemetery fees. And I'd actually like to postpone that till next month. I have some materials that um, I, I've been gathering that I want to get out to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I just want to have a further conversation with the treasurer. I just want to understand better what's um, what our system is with the finances. So I suggest that we just put that aside till next month. Right. Is there anything else? Because I told you this would be a fast meeting. <laughs> so is there anything else that's, uh, we should talk about? We do have um, in section three, uh, which is the section below the below the old section. There's a there's a significant uh, white pine uh, leader that came came down last week. Um, that is being cleaned up today, I believe. And I don't know what the final cost will be, but the the, whole, the entire tree needs to go. It's time for that to go. We we came came through this one. Um, fairly unscathed, uh, a close call for a couple of monuments, but yeah. nothing got broken. Um, I, that won't be the case the next time a leader comes out of that tree. So that um, that tree, unfortunately, I think is at a point where it needs to be removed. Okay. So the, contact the tree warden. Tree warden is, yes, we, I did a walk through a couple of weeks ago with him. All right. Um, so this, this particular tree is a is a here and now problem. Right, if he thinks he's addressed, he can just 
order it taken down. We're going to move forward with that. Um, but I did have a number of other things looked at, some some maintenance along the um, east property line, along the new section of the cemetery. Uh, quite a bit of quite a bit of um, work that needs to be done in there. A couple of uh, declining maples within the the older sections of the cemetery, which are beyond um, salvage, and then also looking at the remainder of majority maple trees that could be pruned and cabled and saved for quite a quite a ways in into the future. Um, so I, I had a, a tree, and this was all stuff that I walked the cemetery with the tree warden a couple of weeks ago. He's he's looked at that with me, identified it, um, and I, I we've had a tree company look at those. I have some numbers. Uh, nothing that I don't think we can uh, authorize immediately unless there's some funding and other from other sources. Uh, but um, we're looking at like twenty thousand dollars worth of work. So a budget item possibly for the coming season, mm -hmm. perhaps. Um, the white pine the, should come down. You know wow. that 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 should be addressed. I do believe we have some money. We have money for trees. We have some money for tree cemetery trees now. Right. Uh, I don't know that we have the 20 grand to move ahead with the bigger project, but uh, no, I don't. Think I, I don't think we do. But it's so let's get rid of the immediate. Yeah. Thing. So for planning purposes, okay. I've I've got some numbers on those other other uh, items that need to be need to be addressed. Okay. So. And uh, can I get a mapping update? How is the mapping update? Yeah. Of you mean records? The yeah. File cards. Um, <laughs> yeah. <I've, laughs> the past five years, there were approximately. Um, 90 or so unrecorded burials done in town. I've got that list whittled down to maybe 20 to 30 that remain. Okay, excellent. So, and that's a process of working off of um, turnovers that were done to the treasurer, you know, turned over to the treasurer funds and uh, researching checks and names on checks and then coupling that with institutional knowledge of families and the cemetery and a lot of online obituaries and a lot of phone calls to uh, funeral homes to piece together information and try to update the uh, the records Excellent. best Thank I can. You. So there's probably You're 20 20 to 30 more. Okay. Oh, you made you made a lot of progress. There's so a, a lot of headway. Yeah. 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 And then separating out, there's probably uh, I think there was 15 or so that on the list that were conducted in St. Joseph's Cemetery. And I will, once I complete the town cemetery, I will update those records at St. Joe's as well. Have um, they come in to to get their records at all or not? We haven't heard much of it. I mean, yeah. so we need to reach out at some point. Right. Yeah. Now, up until 2017, the church should have had, to the best of my knowledge, maintained duplicate records. And our, our, um, our files were pretty much in line as far as having the same information. Uh, so it would be just a matter of, I believe, the f past five years, just updating those. Yeah. Um, many of those are in existing plots. I don't, I, only a small handful um, are, are, were new, newly assigned plots from what I, from what I gather. So you have just 20 or 30 remaining and 15 of those are probably in St. Joseph's. Mm, yeah, about yeah probably okay. half, half okay. of the remaining. Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yep. So Good. it's doable. It's being worked on. Um, yeah. Thanks for the update. <laughs> Is there anything else? We're, we're good. Yeah. All right. So uh, our next meeting is October 28th. Um, and uh, same time, same place. And so um, we can adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you, Peter, for coming. Pleasure. <laughs> and doing a great job. <laughs> I'm here when historical issues arise. <laughs> and they will. <laughs>